Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you ready for tonight's service? Let me hear a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We begin the service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, I shout a big amen. Amen, amen. Blessings and glory. Wisdom, thanksgiving. And none of power and mind belongs to our God forever and ever. Amen. 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 Say. Bye. 
again, telling God that as we've come to him, we've opened up. He should touch us so that we will live here as people with testimony of tangibility. Jesus. That we will live here as people whose life is being transformed. That we will live here as people who are imitating the excellence of Christ. So commit yourself into the hands of God. That the Spirit of God should touch your heart. The Spirit of God should enlighten you as you come to Him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. once again, yes. that you live here as people whose lives are being transformed. Yes. We know and for sure that indeed you are in our midst. Yes. We give you all the glory. We thank you for taking adult control over today's program. In Jesus' mighty name that we pray with thanksgiving. And let us say shout a big amen. 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 Christ in you. The hope of glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Is somebody here to praise God tonight? Yeah. If you're here to praise God, somebody give the Lord a shout. And can you please be on your feet and give the Lord a shout in here? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bring it out, bring it out. I salute all the apostles and the prophets in the house. Amen. Can you please give somebody a high five? Say, neighbor. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You are too quiet to my liking. Say, neighbor. Are you ready to praise God? Are you ready to praise God? Say, your praise, your praise, your praise, your praise. Say, your miracles in your praise. Your blessing is in your praise. Your healing is in your place. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Somebody squeeze. Say, I will praise the Lord at all time. And his praise shall continually be on my lips. Somebody give the Lord a shout. 
before we do praise do we have some Jamaicans in the house can I take you to the island we're gonna do just one song if you know you're from Jamaica just lift your one finger in the air y'all ready all right come on now everybody come on now let me hear you what Everybody, put your hands in the air. Who just bless no one can say. Everybody, come on now. Oh, 
says the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength look at you say neighbor the joy of the Lord is your strength all right let me see your hand come on now hand get you
comprehend what the Lord has done. He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me the victory. That's why we serve. Everybody will say. I could now walk I touch It's a last song. I could now walk I touch You say everybody say
now, please be on your feet, please. With all due respect, please be on your feet. Lift your two hands up, please. We are about to enter into the time of worship right now. Just lift up your two hands in the atmosphere. Come on. The glory of the Lord is here. Come on. Lift your hands. Lift your hands all over this place. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 The atmosphere is charged. Amen. Amen. Somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. We celebrate the King. We lift your name up, Jesus. You are worthy. Oh, somebody, I know your heart is ready. Say something to the Lord in your own words, in your own language. This is from you to God. Sing a love song unto the Lord, unto Jesus Christ, our Savior, our soon coming King, our Redeemer, our righteousness, our holiness, our God and King. He is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. Somebody praise him. Somebody say something to him. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We give you praise. Somebody say something to the Lord. Oh, somebody look unto Jesus. The Bible say that he is the author and the finisher of our faith. We are here because of you. Oh, you are waiting for a song. I don't have a song. Lift your voice and say something to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we worship you. It is about you and your glory. It's about you and your presence, Lord. We give you praise. You are holy. Only you are holy. Hallelujah. You are holy. Only you are holy. Sing Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Holy. Only you are holy. Sing you are holy, Lord. Holy. Only you. Only you are holy. Sing you are holy, Lord. You are holy. Only you. Only you are holy. Sing you are holy, Lord. You are holy. Only you. Only you are holy. Sing Lamb of God. God's seated on the right hand and of the Father. You are holy. 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 Sing it, Lamb of God, yeah. Lamb of God, you are seated on the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Only you are holy. Sing it, Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Sing it, 
we thank you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, who are we that you are so mindful of us? That we are here not because of what we've done. In fact, just today we did you wrong, a lot of us here. But because you're a good God, Father, you have allowed us to be in your presence to lift up our hands. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We don't take you for granted, oh Lord. We appreciate the gift of life. Have your way in our hearts. Even as the praises has gone up, Father, your glory has come down. Now, God, do unto us as you please, O oh God. Not our will, O oh God, but your will. May we not leave this place the same, O oh Father. If we are lost, may we be found, O oh Father. If we are backslided, may we come back home, Father. If we know you and we are walking with you, may we go deeper, Lord. There are higher heights in you, O oh God. Open our eyes to see you, Jesus. We give you praise. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Do we have the highlight video already? 
All right, we will move on with the program then. Are you excited to be here tonight? All right, we are ready for the highlight video. Right now I'm here. This is such a great conference that we are in. From the music ministry that is now performing to the instrumentals to the men of God. If you didn't come, you missed out. It's an encounter. It's, it's... We just finished the first service and already I've experienced the move of God. If you missed it, you missed out. So this has been an amazing experience. Amazing. I'm so glad to be here. And if you're not here, you're really missing out. So much fun. It was so amazing. So amazing, yeah. Somebody scream, I shout, they celebrate excellence. C-O-P. Come on, C-O-P. Again, C-O-P. Louder, C-O-P. Now let's add something to it. Pesa, excellence. Are you ready? C-O-P, U-S-A. Pesa. Excel, come on, C O P, C O P, Pensa, come on, 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 Pensa. All right, somebody said. Excellence. So, so, hallelujah. Amen. A quick information for us. Are we enjoying excellence so far? Are we thankful to God for what he's doing in our midst? It's amazing. It's only day two and people are already saying this is amazing. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell him, neighbor, this is amazing. Tell him, neighbor, this is unforgettable. Tell somebody behind you, neighbor, this is an encounter. Wonderful. Before I hand it back, we are just so thankful to the Lord who has worked through many of our leaders in the past. I mean, our national leaders, national heads. God has done so much to this point when we can see that we continue to build bigger and better. 
on the foundation and on the labor of many that have gone ahead of us. So we want to maintain a heart of humility and gratitude to God. Today I met Dr. Samenji outside. He was one of the past national leaders. They worked so hard in their time. And he said, Pastor, Pensa is evolving into something else. Hallelujah. Oh, put it together for the Lord Jesus Christ. A quick information. Excellence comes at a cost. Somebody say excellence comes at a cost. So as we are enjoying excellence, let's also be prepared to sponsor excellence. Tell somebody we must sponsor excellence. And the more we sponsor excellence, the more God releases resources upon us because our God is a God of excellence. And anything that is excellent, heaven stands behind it. All that you see here, the beauty of this platform and the beauty of this auditorium is all money. Tonight and tomorrow and on Sunday, we shall be taking offerings to support excellence. Oh, you are not putting your hands together. You are not putting your hands together. We shall be taking special offerings to support excellence. And I believe that what we are saying, we are not going back. We will do even better and better and better. Because God will give us the money and the resources to do even better. Hallelujah. So prepare yourself. When we talk of excellence, nothing is too big. You just aim high, defy the risk, and move forward. Hallelujah. And so we are really looking forward that God will move people to sponsor excellence over the next few days. May the Lord richly bless you all. Oh, hallelujah. Put your hands together for our national leader. We are excited and ready to sponsor excellence. Amen. Tonight, my name is Overseer Seth Osei. I'll be your pilot on flight number PENSA2017. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, tighten your seatbelt. Be ready for takeoff. Tonight is tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Without wasting much time tonight, we are going to invite our Pensa Mass Choir to give us a special song ministration. Put your hands together for the Pensa Mass Choir. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. The Bible makes us aware that we are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. And we are the light unto the world. Amen. This evening, one minute to turn to you that you have been called to be a perfect example unto others. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that you have been called by God? Oh, how many of you believe if you believe, raise your hand. How many of you believe that I've been called by God? Hallelujah. Bible says that for we are the called of God, we are a chosen generation. God intentionally chose us so that we'll be an example. Hallelujah. So 
Thank you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. It is all about you. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody be on your feet and let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up and bless the holy name of Jesus Christ. You are here, moving in the midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, rearranging destinies. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, telling lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. You are working miracles. He's changing your life around. Lord, we worship you. Oh, oh, oh. we make a miracle. Come on, sing with me, somebody. He's the promise. You 
Hallelujah. Before we listen to the word of God, we would like to invite one of our special guests to give us a special song ministration. Oh, are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? We have our own brother, Chris Jenfi, in the house. Is Chris here? Oh, put your hands together for our brother, Chris Jenfi. Hallelujah. Lift your two hands in the air. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. The team 
for tonight is imitating Christ in our generation. Amen. And the reason why we are here is that we are here for Christ to transform us, to change us into a different level. Amen. And I believe by the time you leave here tonight, or by the time this program goes to an end, your life will never be the same. If you believe, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
happen. Come on. Baba, oh. Whilst you're singing, there's a visitation coming to you. Lift your voice. Come and say. your presence what a mighty God we serve glory glory hallelujah everything within the body is great can I sing it again can I sing it again you want to say this demons tremble at your presence, there's no God like our God. What am I? He called me, he said, Rabban, he can't ever shut up. Shabbat shalom. 
every tongue shall confess that you are Jesus. 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 And begin to say something for unto Jesus tonight. Please take a moment and bless the name of the Lord. Please have your seat. Please have your seat. Rebo Shandi did we have? Time ministry of the Church of Pentecost USA Inc. in May 2002. After serving four years as presiding elder of Dallas Central Assembly from 1998 to 2002, he was ordained a pastor in 2005 and has served as district minister from the following districts Charlotte, PRWC New York, Richmond, and currently Minnesota. Pastor John K. Ansa has also served in various capacities in COP USA Inc. as follows National Children's Ministry Leader, National Estates Committee Chairman, Finance and Administration Manager, National Finance Board Secretary, National Literature Committee Chairman, National Youth and Penta Ministry Leader, and Acting Evangelism Director. Pastor John K. Ansa holds a BA in Sociology and Geography, a DIPED from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana, MPhil from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana, MACM from Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, and a THM candidate. He is happily married to Mrs. Florence, and they have three children, Jane, Samuela, and Johnny. Please wow. welcome Pastor John K. Ansa. Yeah, what's up, what's up, what's up, man? Let me feel you, let me feel, come on, let me, let me feel that you are in the house tonight. Let me feel somebody in the house tonight. Oh, come on, you are kidding me. Hallelujah! Wow. I just can't think far. I can't think far. <laughs> this is amazing. May the peace of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. And I thank God for this great opportunity for me to share the word of God with you. And all protocol observed, I want to uh, thank our national head, Apostle Michael Ajimena Mwakon, and the wife, our regional heads, the apostles, and also uh, Apostle Asabil all the way uh, from Ghana. Man, this is one hip conference. I mean, this is one hip conference. I was, I, was, I was watching live yesterday, and I was just asking myself, I mean, is this Church of Pentecost or what? Are you kidding me? Man, that's awesome. Preacher man, you were awesome. And this morning, I saw a new theologian in our church, an apologetic, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, Dr. Albert Osei. That was awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to ask to give a round of applause to our national head and our national youth and pencil leader for such a great move. Wow. You have taken this thing to a whole new level. And I am glad to be part of it. Amen. So tonight I want to do something simple and get out of here. I've been taxed to talk to you tonight about see you at the top, exploring spiritual pathways to excellence. Amen. 
And the scripture that I was given, the text that I was given, was called from Daniel chapter number 6, verse 3 to 5, meaning that I have to stay within the confines of Daniel. And I will read from the New King James Version of the Bible. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and the satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find no charge of fault because he was faithful. Nor was there any error of fault found in him. These men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Shall we pray? Father, may you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Woo. So this presentation will highlight principles derived from a reflective study centered on the character of Daniel and my own life as a follower of Christ for the past 40 years. I'm persuaded that these principles can help us discover spiritual pathways to excellence. Daniel is a testament to limitless potential of the spirit of excellence. So I, I, I want to quickly get into what excellence actually means, then I get into my preaching, hallelujah. Uh, the dictionary defines it in so many ways, like possessing good qualities in a high degree, a state of superiority, to be outstanding, exceeding or surpassing normal expectations, achieving a high level of performance. Uh, a few authors have also defined excellence. Harold Best defined it this way, that excellence is the process of becoming better than I once was. I am not to become better than someone else or even like someone else. And Gary Ingring, a renowned expert in the field of excellence, defines it as excellence is the maximum exercise of our gifts and abilities within the range of responsibilities given to us by God. And uh, as a theologian myself, uh, I try to coin my own definition. And mine is, excellence is not a happenstance. But a process of character building according to God's standard. Now, I'll say it again because that's my own definition. Excellence is not a happenstance. It has not just happened but a process of character building according to God's standard. In fact, it is the state of one's heart. Amen. Now, I, I, I just want us to understand that tonight, if you are here, God created you to be excellent. Uh, I, I mean, you are already excellent. Uh, for God created you in his own image. Uh, I, I feel like just flying right now. So the believer in Christ was created for excellence. Uh, and to operate in mediocrity is contrary to our divine nature in Christ. Man was created in the image and likeness of God. He is, an, he is excellent as God is excellent. In fact, we have the spiritual DNA of excellence in us. Tell your neighbor, I am excellent. I was created well by God. I am favored by God. Christ lives inside of me. And he who lives in me is greater than he who is in the world. So say I am excellent. Now, now Psalm 16 and verse number 3 says, As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the excellent ones. Ooh. As for the saints who are on the earth, 
You are a saint because you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And because you have believed on the Lord Jesus as your personal savior, the Lord looks upon you not as a sinner. The Lord looks upon you not as a defeated person, but he looks upon you as an excellent individual. In whom is all my delight. Second Peter 1, 3 to 4 says, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us very great and precious promises that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption caused by evil desires. Now, one thing I want you to understand about excellence is that excellence is not about competition. Excellence is not about you being better than your friend or being better than the other person. In fact, excellence is a challenge for you to be your better self. Oh, is somebody hearing me? So, so, so don't ever compare yourself with somebody else because God created us uniquely. God created us differently. God created us for a purpose. God created you for a reason. Your purpose and your reason is not the other person's reason. Don't compare yourself. Believe in yourself as a child of the living God. And your excellence is not determined by another person's success. Your excellence is determined by your own. No, oh, oh, I don't feel you. I don't feel the church. So, you are not comparing your generation. You want to be somebody else. Uh, you want to be like that star. You want to be like that person. No, don't be like anybody. Be your own self. For that is who God has created you to be. You are excellent. And you have the favor of the living God. And, and I just want to Let us look at the difference between a godly excellence and worldly excellence. Godly excellence seeks to impress no one but glorifies God. But the worldly one seeks to impress the world and glorifies self. The selfies. The I am them. Godly excellence is achieved within the boundaries of the word of God. But the worldly excellence could be achieved by any means at all. Godly excellence sees others as partners and seeks to aid them. But worldly excellence sees others as a threat or competitors and seeks to destroy them. Mm, that ain't good. Godly excellence fulfills divine purpose in partnership with God and others. But the worldly excellence fulfills personal ambition at the expense of other people. We are Christians. Our excellence is between ourselves and our God. Now, 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 now to go back to what I've been asked to talk about, you all know the story of Daniel, that they were taken captive from Judah, from their land, onto the land of Babylon. They became immigrants over there. And the Bible tells us that when they got there, King Nebuchadnezzar wanted people to serve in his government. And it's so amazing that the kind of requirement that he needed is so special. When you read Daniel chapter 1 verse 3 to 5, it gives you the requirement for the admission to the University of Babylon where the chancellor was Nebuchadnezzar. He says that this is what I want. I want young men who have no physical defects, who are handsome, who have aptitude for learning, who are well informed, and who are quick to understand. Now, these are the determinants of excellence. If one wants to be excellent, you have to have an outward appearance that is appealing, you have to be decent and have good character. 
If you want to be excellent, then you must have passion for what you're doing. If you want to be excellent, you must be knowledgeable in the field that you find yourself. If you want to be excellent, then you need to be smart as well. Now, when they got there, the Bible says that the king wanted to change them. They were excellent from Judah. These guys knew their God, had the power of God in their lives, knew Jehovah of heaven. They have lived, they had prayed, they have studied the Torah, they have studied everything. And they went to Babylon. Now, what the king wanted to do was this, that there are three weapons to control people in this world. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted to use those three weapons. The first weapon is language. The second weapon is food. And the third weapon is the name. So he said that, hey, what I want you to do is that take these people through three years of training. And in those three years, try as much as you can to teach them the language of the Chaldeans. Teach them our language. Number two, I don't want them to be eating the food that they used to eat. I want them to eat our food. Number three, I want their names to be changed. The only way the enemy can get hold of you, the only way your excellence will be impeached upon is when your language is changed. It's when your food is changed. It's when your name is changed. In fact, your language stands for your culture. Now, you understand that the speech centers of our brains control our mind. So language, in a way, is something that controls your mind. Uh, and most of you here, I speak like a Ghanaian, right? Oh, I don't? I thought I did. I thought I did. But being here for some time, my language is changing. And as my language is changing, my character is also changing. The way I look at things changing, I am becoming more American than a Ghanaian. And that is what language does. Uh, the Bible says that the Tower of Babel was built because there was what? One language. Language is a powerful tool for excellence. Language is a powerful tool to change people's mind. That is why God said that I will not allow you to build because if I allow you and keep your language, you can do whatever you want. That is why God scattered them and dispersed their language. Language is a powerful tool that if you are not careful, can destroy your excellence. So they changed their language. Not only their language, but also their food or their appetite. You see, no wonder on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, I don't know why, but God caused them to speak in tongues. Because language is powerful. Language can change your life. So the Holy Ghost baptism comes, and then your speech changes. The way you speak will change. The way you talk changes, and it brings change in your life. That is what language does. And then he said that their food must be changed. They don't have to eat kosher. Or pork. Don't eat, I mean, you can't eat certain things. It means that he's trying to change their appetite. My God. Their appetite. Tonight, I don't know what your appetite is. But as a Christian, you have an appetite for righteousness. You have an appetite for holiness. You have an appetite for prayer. You have an appetite for the word of God. You have an appetite for love. You have an appetite to do right. Don't allow anything to change your appetite. The third thing that happened to them was that their names were also changed. And your name is your identity. Daniel's name meant God is my judge. But it was changed to Belshazzar or Bel protects you. Hananiah means Jehovah is gracious. It was changed to Shadrach or the moon god. 
Mishael means who is like God was changed to Meshach, which means Aku. Azariah means the Lord helps, but it was changed to Abednego, meaning Nebu, a god in Babylon. But these three guys, their names, I believe, stood for something. Hananiah means the gracious God. It means grace. It stands there for Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Mishael's name means who is like Jehovah, meaning that God the Father. Azariah's name means the Lord my helper. And we know that the Holy Spirit is our helper. Oh, hallelujah. So these three guys, they stood for God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I am here tonight to let somebody know that as you sit here tonight, you have the Father on your side. You have the Son on your side. You have the Holy Spirit on your side. You don't have to allow anybody, you don't have to allow anything to change your identity. Tell somebody, don't change my identity. Because I belong to Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I want to rush and then we'll talk about how to cultivate excellence, the spirit of excellence. Vince Lombardi once said, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. If you want to cultivate excellence, you must be filled with the spirit and be led by the spirit. For the Bible says that then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. If you want to cultivate excellence, you must commit to growth and advancement. Paul said that not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize for the upward call of Christ in me. If you want to cultivate excellence, you must be diligent. The hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. You must associate with the right company, with the right people. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. You have to make sure that you are hanging out with the right people. Hanging out with people who are born again. People who have the word of God in their lives. Hallelujah. Now I want to go to the main thing that I was asked to talk about. The impediments to excellence. Impediments to excellence. The things that are not allow us to be excellent. Number one, I know you guys, you're on social media, right? Hello? Uh-huh. Sometimes I thank God that I don't belong to this generation because I would have been found wanting big time. But social media, is something that takes away a whole lot of your time. It takes a whole lot of your time. It gives you a false representation of what excellence is. It gives you a false presentation. People only post what they want you to see. Hey, Yehovah. Uh -huh. They just post what they want you to see. Uh, they just post the good things about themselves on there. Uh, their best pictures, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, uh, the best places. Uh, somebody can just go and Photoshop a place and bring it as the background and, and stay there and say, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This guy is chilling. He ain't chilling nothing. He ain't chilling nothing. He's just deceiving you, man. <laughs> oh, my God. 
So please, it's a good thing. I love it. It's nice. I'm trying Instagram. I'm way behind, but I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm getting there. But it's good, but be careful. Don't be deceived by what you see. Don't be deceived by what you read. Oh, come on. Don't be deceived by that. There are nothing going on with anybody anywhere on that social media. Believe in yourself. Believe in what God has made you. Don't allow anybody to bully you on social media for you to think that you are nothing. You are something. You are created in the image of God Almighty. Recently, a boy killed himself because the girlfriend egged him on to do that. That's social media. Are you kidding me? It can pull you away from what is important and the possibility of developing good character traits. In fact, it can even get you in trouble which may hinder you from excelling in opportunities in the future because everything you leave there stays there. Don't go on there and say things that you cannot take back. Don't go there and let somebody fool you. Be wise and stay wise on social media. You have to make sure that you don't have wrong association, as I said before. Sometimes your negative thoughts and thinking can also cause your excellence to come down. That you think about yourself that you are nothing. I have sinned and I am like that and I'm broken. I don't care whether you are broken or not. God is ready to raise you up and to bring you up to where you belong. You don't have to stay where you are. You have to rise up. Change your mind. Don't let your thoughts bring you down. Laziness, sloppiness can get you down. Over commitment. Doing so many things at the same time. And lack of divine connection with the Lord. And sometimes the flesh and the devil also fight against us. The pathway for you to succeed, number one, is the word of God. Is what is the word of God. The Bible says that study this book of the law, meditate on it day and night, and be sure to obey what is, and you will be excellent and succeed. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Galatians 3.16 says that, let the words of Christ dwell in you. So let the word of God be in you. Number two, pathway is prayer. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down. He prayed with his brothers. Ephesians says that we should pray at all times. And never, never give up. Our chairman's example. I, I was reading his book. And, 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 and the author, Elder Gibson Anno Anchi, in the book Myth or Mystery, the bio-autobiography of Apostle Professor Opoku Yuna states that, it was a humbling experience and a very touching sight to behold. Due to his persistent kneeling down in prayer, his kneecaps had pressed, deadened, and darkened the skin covering both kneecaps. About as many as seven prominent black ridges stood out on the knee. Page 489. And that is the picture of the chairman of the church upon his knees praying all the time. Young men and women, get up and pray. Get on your knees and pray. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Another pathway is to be connected, to have fellowship and teamwork, that is what Daniel did. Daniel was not idiosyncratic. Daniel was not parochial. Daniel was not myopic. Daniel needed his friends. The Bible says that he went to his friends, called them, let us pray together. Daniel chapter 2, verse 48 and 49 says that when he was elevated, when he was appointed, he told the king that, Master King, I am not the only one here. I have three other brothers down there. Can you lift them up again? That is what excellence is about. Excellence does not put people down. Excellence lifts, lifts people up. 
to where they belong. So when you get to the top, don't stay there alone. Don't enjoy the victory alone. Reach out your hand to the ground. Your brother who is there, your sister who is there, your father who is there, stretch forth your hand and bring them up to where they belong. And we need to put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. As I conclude, I just want to tell you a little bit about my stuff. Because I believe that Daniel is all right. But I'm hip too. I'm here now. That I've come this far because of the spirit of excellence. Because I loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, my God, even my God, has anointed me, hallelujah, with the oil of gladness. Young men and women, love righteousness. I say what? Love righteousness. Love holiness. You might have fallen down right now in pornography, in fornication, whatever situation it is. I don't want you to remain in that situation. Tonight is a night for you to be delivered. Tonight is a night for you to be set free. Tonight is a night for you to get up and rise up from where you are and stand up upon your two feet and lift up your hand and say, I am not going back to where I belong. I'm not going back to my sin. I will rise up and move forward to where God wants me to go. God needs to see you on the top of the mountain. You don't have to stay at the ground. You have to lift yourself up and be where God has called you to be. The other thing that has helped me is to have mentors in my life. People who can stand and challenge me. In my high school days, I had people like Pastor Joseph Saki, Apostle Echo Bedu Wood, Apostle Say. These were great men who challenged me to pray, who prayed for me to receive the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God. Finally, what can make you strong in the Lord is to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. For you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. There is no power, there is no authority, there is nothing that can destroy you if the fire of the Holy Spirit is upon you. Therefore, tonight, I just came here to tell you that God has given you the spirit of excellence. You'll be able to rise up from where you are and get to the top and do what God has called you to do. Don't let anybody, don't let anything bring you down. Finally, finally, stay in this church. Stay in this church. You have nowhere to go. This is the place. I joined the church when I was about 13 or 14 years. I stayed in it. At 19, I was ordained a deacon of the church. At 20, I was a presiding deacon of a church. Man, there's a future for you in this church. Don't go anywhere. There are anything better out there. Every good thing is here. Our church might not be the perfect church. Oh, yes, it might not be the perfect church. But I've come to know that it is one of the best churches ever you can be a part of. Don't walk away. We are handing the baton over to you. It is your generation. Our generation, we are slipping away. But it is up to you to rise up and do what God has called you to do. Tonight, God has made you excellent. You have an excellent spirit. Don't allow anything to bring you down. Rise up and do what God has called you to do. May the Lord bless you. May his favor be upon you. And may you rise up to do the best you can for the Lord in Jesus' name. And the church said... Hallelujah. Shall we be upstanding? I want you to begin to speak in some tongue. Begin to blow in some tongue. Begin to blow in some tongues. Luka prosike tendele breka ya babro sike tendele rebe antaya baba. Luka rabro suka taya baba rababa. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Do you believe that Jesus is here? Where Jesus is, anything can happen. What God started with Abraham through Isaac, Jacob, and the apostles, it is now our time. Look at somebody in time, it is your time. Excellence is our legacy. That's the point I'm trying to make. We have no other option. We want to sing this song together. The man of God said that to excel, we need to be filled with the spirit of God. Tonight, we are going to have an encounter with the spirit of God. Oh, we are going to have an encounter with the spirit of God. We are in your presence. Oh, let it rain. Oh, pour your rain.
begin to pray. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. 
Listen to me, somebody. Jesus. You cannot settle for the mountains when God has a promised land for you. You cannot settle for an Ishmael when there is an Isaac for you. Hey. Jesus. This is a destiny changing encounter. Yes, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Yes, yes. Tell yourself, I'm not going back the same. I'm not going, going back the same. same. Something must happen. Jesus. Yes. Something must happen. We are going to sing this song. And then we'll pray one more time. Holy, 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 holy Ghost. Oh, come, come and take control. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. holy oh, holy somebody sing now.
He knew that people around him also had their own dreams. Yes. Don't just think about your own dream. There are people around you who also carry some dream. Yes. We are going to pray for that spirit of excellence. That spirit that makes you not tell us. That spirit that makes you help somebody. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. One more time. We need the spirit of excellence in this house. Robo Sikaraba.
And you are that future. Jesus. Yes. Yes. I say you are that future. Oh, yes. Yes. You are that future. Jesus. Jesus. God is going to raise some apostles Jesus. that have never been in the church before. Yes. God is raise, I'm going, to, yes. going to raise some pastors, yes. some elders, yes. anointed elders, yes. anointed pastors yes. who will divide the world yes. with sophistication. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And you are that future. You are the future. I am the future. You are supposed to carry the legacy yes. of the fathers. In the name of Jesus. You are carrying the legacy of the fathers. Jesus. The anointing of the fathers. Yes. Yes. The grace of the fathers. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We are going to pray. Yes. In your profession, you must excel. In the name of Jesus. And as we were worshiping, listen. Sometimes if you are not careful, you will think that this is a student business. So you can exclude yourself. Hey, everybody ought to excel. Even me as a pastor, I must excel. Overseer, you must excel. Everyone in his calling must excel. We are going to pray for our future. The greater grace, the anointing of God, the legacy, the legacy. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. You have a legacy. 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 We have a legacy. We have a legacy in this church. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. You have a legacy. I say you have a legacy. We have a legacy in this church. Oh, it is God's place. It is God's place of excellence. We have a legacy in this church. We have a legacy in the church of Pentecost. Lift up your two hands. Lift up your two hands. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. As we sing this song after which Pastor Potofi will take over for me. Goodbye, world. I'm staying no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. Oh, I'm staying no longer with you. I made up my mind to go cast away the rest of my life. Oh, I made up my mind to go cast away.
carefully. This is a solemn moment that you can encounter a change that would live on the rest of your life. This afternoon I was praying for this conference and the Lord laid on my heart that there is a paradigm shift from mediocrity to excellence. In the name of Jesus. God is shifting people. There is, there is, there is a shifting going on. Yeah. There is a shifting away from the world unto excellence. In the name of Jesus. A shifting away from sin unto holiness. Yeah. A shifting away from failure unto success. Yes. Yeah. And it is happening right now. In yeah. the name of Jesus. It is happening right now. In the yeah. name of Jesus. I'd like you to go back a little bit. The Spirit of God is laying on our heart. There are people here who the Spirit of God is restoring right now as I speak. And I'm going to make an altar call as led. And if you are that person, I want you to take a step of faith and come here. Because Jesus is ready to fill your hungry heart to bring deliverance and to bring restoration onto your brokenness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Social media has traumatized some people in this place. Some of you have been bullied and, and, and have gone through trauma in, a, in an area of your life through interactions with other people and social media outlets. The other time we prayed for somebody and when, when, when manifestations began, this person got infected by that spirit through Facebook. We are not demonizing social media. It has its strengths and benefits. But as the message had come to us, there are some lives. There is one lady I prayed for one time. She called me. She was holding a knife. She was getting ready to kill herself at 11 p.m. And when I asked her what was going on, she said she's been on social media and has been seeing her friends who are getting married and who are getting loved and who are doing weddings. And she feels so depressed. And she hears a voice telling her, you are worthless. You got to kill yourself. And she was getting ready to kill herself when God moved her to give me a call. That was the, her deliverance that time. Eyes closed, everybody. The Spirit of the Lord is here to set us free. You are here right now. You feel so lonely in your soul. You have 5,000 Facebook followers, but you feel so depressed within you. You feel so oppressed within you. I'd like you to take a step of faith and come right here. As the Spirit of God, the river of life is flowing. Just take a step of faith and come here. You are struggling with loneliness. Some of you are struggling with self-esteem. You feel so worthless. You feel it is not worth living life anymore. You feel suicidal. Just rush forward here right now. Just rush forward here right now. Yes, keep coming. This is your moment of destiny. This is your moment to encounter the power of God in your life. Holy Ghost. Some of you have even attempted suicide. Suicidal tendencies are not part of excellence. Excellence means living a free, victorious Christian life. Yes, keep coming. Don't hide there and go back with all the oppressive activities of the enemy in your life? Oh, yes, 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 yes. I am coming, Lord. Oh, come, Lord. Wash me clean by the blood that flows.
if you have been hearing voices telling you you are worthless, you should hurt yourself, just move forward. If you are in the overflow room, we want you to respond to the altar call. We have sent ministers over there to pray for you. So all those in the overflow room, respond to the altar call. The power of God is right there with you. All over this auditorium. All over this auditorium. The four corners of this auditorium. The power of God. I release. We 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 release. The power of God for your deliverance, for your freedom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Jesus. And you are afraid because Jesus. you have failed several times. Oh and you feel you can never cross that Jesus. mountain. The Lord is taking you over. Yes, Lord. You don't believe I said the Lord is taking you over. Amen. You will pass that examination. Yes. There is power in the name of this song goes on. Jesus. The man of God will lay their hands there upon you. And fear will be gone immediately. Every fear will be eliminated Jesus. right away. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Every spirit of fear. Every spirit of fear. We break the yoke of fear. We cancel the yoke of fear. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Yes, it is happening. It is happening. It is happening.
of your people. In the name of Jesus. Yes, it is true that in these last days darkness shall cover the earth but your word tells us the glory of excellence is risen upon us. In the name of Father, we release the glory. In the name of you better receive it with an amen. amen. Receive the glory. Amen. Receive the glory. Amen. May the spirit of excellence In the name of Jesus. let it fall upon you. Amen. 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 I pray for that young lady who has been abused for years sexually by a relation. In the name of Jesus, I come against every form of impact that that trauma of sexual abuse has had upon your life. I declare your release. Amen. I declare your restoration. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus. clothe us with your honor. In the name of Jesus. Like it was upon the life of Daniel. So we pray, let it rest upon every life in this place. Amen. That this conference will forever leave a mark of excellence upon your people. Amen. From all across the regions, yes. from all across the districts, Amen. we declare that excellence has been given birth to. Yes. We declare that it is the beginning of a new level of excellence. Amen. Excellence in our education. Amen. Excellence in our profession. Amen. Excellence in everything we do. Amen. Excellence in our character. Amen. Excellence in our lifestyle. Amen. Receive the grace. Amen. I say receive the grace. Amen. I say receive the grace. I receive it. I say receive the grace. I receive it. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory. Even in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. somebody rejoice with an amen. Rejoice with an amen. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. An excellent conference calls for an excellent time of offering. I believe as we have heard the word from our Reverend Johnny Ansa and a powerful time of prayer from our Reverend Saki Hughes and Reverend Potofi. I believe you are charged to give something to sponsor this conference. Not only sponsoring, but also you are giving to sow a seed for your blessing. 
And this evening we are honored to have Reverend Safu Akoto, who is going to lead us in a special time of offering. Oh, put your hands together for Hallelujah. Reverend Akoto. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Now we have changed pilots. Hallelujah. A new pilot has taken over, and we are 